Today we are talking about forces, and forces are pretty simple. A force is simply a push or a pull. So if I push a shopping cart, I apply to force. If I pull my daughter in a wagon, I apply to force. Okay, if I kick a soccer ball, I apply to force. All forces have both size and direction. Okay, so you're going to have a number value and you're going to have a direction with them. Any change in motion of an object was caused by a force. And the key here is change in motion. Oh, can I put some asterisks on your note sheet with this one? Change in motion. Not any motion was caused by force. Any change in motion was caused by a force. And you'll see, you'll see this later um, when we talk about this. So if it changed motion, a force caused it. Okay, the ball was sitting there, I kicked it, and now it's flying in motion. Okay, a force was applied. The SI unit that we're going to be using is a Newton. Okay, after Isaac Newton, you see him up there when we're talking a lot about him with his with Newton's laws um, a little bit later. Okay, so capital N for Newton is going to be your unit label in the metric system. Not all forces can be seen, and not all forces cause motion. For example, me sitting in a chair. Okay, the force of gravity is pushing down. Okay, the amount of my weight. The chair is pushing back up. They're balanced. We're gonna use this word balanced. There's not a change in motion, so it's gonna be balanced. Usually, there's more than one force acting on an object. The net force is the combination of all those forces acting on an object. So we look at this picture, you see the girl is pushing on the piano with a force of 25 newtons to our right. The boy is pulling with a force of 20 newtons to our right. So you add them up, 25 plus 20 newtons equals 45 newtons to the right. Okay, so we have both our number, our unit label, and then we have that direction. Okay, so you see direction is definitely important. Um, because what if she was pushing 25 newtons to the right, but he was pushing 20 newtons instead of pulling? Okay, the direction matters. Okay, if it was 25 for her, 20 for him, then it'd be a net force of 5. You just subtract. And we'll see that in the next picture. Okay, so in the first picture here, we see... The book has a net force, or has a force of 18 newtons to the right, but a force of 20 newtons to the left. Okay? Notice that you see this yellow arrow is slightly longer than the pink arrow. It's called a vector. Basically, it's an arrow um, that's proportional to its size, okay, uh, to its strength. So the yellow arrow is a little bit longer than the pink one. So the net force is going to be 20 minus 18, so it's going to be 2 newtons and then direction to the left. Okay, so two newtons to the left because the 20 newtons was a little bit stronger. Okay, pretty easy, right? Then we go to the right picture and we see the book is being pushed 20 newtons to the right and also 20 newtons to the left. Okay, they balance out, 20 minus 20 is zero, so the net force is zero newtons. Okay, we're gonna call that balanced. Okay, on the next slide we're going to call that a balanced forces. Okay, balanced. Okay, they're equal. Net force is zero newtons. Will that book experience a change in motion? No. Okay, it's going to remain sitting there on the table. No change in motion because the net force is zero newtons. Now we're going to see what these balanced and, unforces and unbalanced forces are. Balanced forces, when the forces on an object produce a net force of zero newtons, the forces are balanced. There will be no change in motion of the object. And I keep stressing this, no change in motion. Not no motion, but no change in motion. Okay. Um, you see the guy standing here, um, his weight is pushing down the force of gravity. The floor is pushing up equally. Okay? The floor isn't pushing up more, otherwise he'd be flying into the ceiling. His gravity isn't pulling down more, otherwise he'd be going through the floor. 
they're equal, they're balanced. So he's just standing there. Okay. Um, think about if we're playing tug of war. On one side, the group is pulling with the exact same strength, the exact same force as the other side. Okay. The net force will be zero because it's the same strength. So neither person is winning. Okay. They're balanced. Unbalanced then, probably can figure out um, what the unbalanced is. When the net force on an object is not zero newtons, they're unbalanced. The object will experience a change in motion. Okay. So again, think that we're playing tug of war. I'm pulling against you. I'm stronger, of course, so I will pull you in my direction. It will be unbalanced. You're going to change your motion. When I kicked the soccer ball, okay, it experienced a change in motion. It was an unbalanced force. A um, couple more examples. We see in the first picture here Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal at the French Open sitting in the chairs. Balanced or unbalanced? Well, is there a change in motion? No, they're balanced. Force of gravity balancing out what the chair is pushing up. Second picture down here, we have Gilbert Brown of the Green Bay Packers tackling work done to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Is that going to be balanced? No. Gilbert Brown is going to have way more um, force. I don't know what it's going to be, but we know it's going to be unbalanced. There is going to be a change in motion, and it's going to be kind of in that direction, okay, towards the work done. Um, definitely Gilbert Brown force will be bigger. This last, pic last picture here is um, a little tougher one. We see a parachutist in a parachute, and he is gliding down. Balanced or unbalanced? Well, if you look at these vectors here, you can kind of get a little bit of a hint. It is going to be balanced. Okay, that's kind of the goal of a parachute. It's going to slow you down to a constant speed. So he is just drifting down at a constant speed, let's say five miles per hour, just going down, 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 five miles per hour. There is no change in motion. Okay, that same path, that same speed, no change in motion. So it is balanced. Gravity, the weight from gravity, is balanced by the air resistance. Okay, so it is balanced. And that's where I, that key is, change in motion. Was there a change in motion? Not just motion, was there a change in motion? last thing we're going to do here, and we're not going to do this fully because we don't have enough knowledge yet of, of numbers. We're going to wait to do this example a little bit better when we get to um, momentum. But it's the car crashes. So let's imagine that we have an intersection. And here's my intersection. And I have a little smart car, a little Fiat, some little tiny car here, and it's going that and then over here, I have a big, huge semi-truck. And it is going this direction. Okay, And neither of them see the stop sign, and they are going to smash together. Okay, They're smashing together right in the middle. Do you think they're going to stop right there? No. no, obviously not. But where will they end up? Are they end up over here somewhere? Down here somewhere? Over here somewhere? Okay. You know, stay you know, kind of in the middle. Okay. Like I said, you probably don't know yet. We're going to add numbers because we need we need to get the momentum. So next uh, next unit, we're going to do it with momentum. So we'll get the masses and the velocities, and we'll do all the calculations, and so we can see exactly where they end up. But you should have the general understanding that this truck is going to have more force, so they're going to end up hopefully somewhere down in here um, if they crash. They're going to be more towards this side as they go. Okay, It's all about forces. And that's it. Okay, Forces are pretty simple. They are a push or a pull. They may or may not cause a change in motion. If they do cause a change in motion, they were unbalanced. If they don't cause a change in motion, they were balanced. That's it.